Today, all of my fact hunters, I will be tasking you with going out for 30 minutes to <laughs> darkest Transylvania, where you will find for me all the funny facts about the vampires. Oh, <laughs> Hello everybody, fangs for joining us. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Big Fact Hunt. Today, this week, I've charged our intrepid fact explorers with going out and finding the best facts that they could about vampires. So for the past 30 minutes, they've been looking those up. The stakes are high and uh, about to descend. So over to you guys. I think I will pick on Tom. Over to you first for your first vampire fact. I have a, an excellent vampire fact. Um, we all know the great series of films, Hotel Transylvania, um, starring Adam Sandler as Count Dracula. Um, well, uh, he has a daughter called Mavis, and uh, she's initially played by Selena Gomez, but was going to be played by Miley Cyrus, except that she posted a picture of herself uh, buying Liam Hemsworth a penis shaped cake for his birthday and then licking it. Uh, and so Disney basically kicked her off the project because she was licking a penis shaped cake for Liam Hemsworth. Is that oh, a Disney because film? canonically, vampires don't eat food, so that would be unrealistic for the doesn't children watching. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but they would potentially lick a dick. I don't think they would lick it, just bite it. Get that uh, <laughs> anticoagulant <laughs> saliva on somehow. <laughs> they normally suck things, right? So, um, <laughs> and apparently, um, wow. Sony or um, or and Disney at the time, um, yeah, confirmed it. They're like, "Yep, we weren't so keen." So they got Selena Gomez. Oh. Ken, would you take us away for our <laughs> next day? Did you know that King George was a vampire and could have been cured by potatoes? What? Which King George? Okay. Mad King George. This goes back to the idea linking the um, blood disorder porphyria with vampirism. So porphyria can cause extreme photosensitivity to the extent that people with severe forms of porphyria can blister in just normal sunlight really, really quickly. Mm. Um, and your hair and your nails can fall out. You can even have erosion of the lips and nose and ears so you can look like a walking skull. Um, you can have deformed teeth and eye abnormalities as well. So you can end up looking quite, you know, potentially like some depictions of vampires that we've seen in popular culture. And the body requires porphyrins to produce heme, which is obviously in hemoglobin. It's used to carry oxygen in your blood. But in the porphyrias, there's a deficiency of this. And so there's a theory that the blood drinking thing is vamp vampires trying to um, replace the porphyrin porphyrins that they've not been able to produce themselves unfortunately this is almost certainly not true so king george was almost certainly bipolar and the symptoms of porphyria don't line up with the depictions of vampirism at the time like in the 1800s the symptoms of vampirism were quite different to the symptoms of porphyria so it's not likely but it's interesting that as culture has gone on, our depictions of vampires have almost become more in line with porphyria. But one of the cool things is that a high carbohydrate diet can be a way of um, treating porphyria. Wow. If so King George had had porphyria, which he probably didn't, he could have been cured by eating a lot of potatoes. <laughs> I think a lot of potatoes can oh. cure anything, especially oh, hunger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Counterpoint, if he had been cured of the porphyria that he probably didn't have, we wouldn't have the Brighton Pavilion because that's the Prince Regent's delightful <laughs> insanity. Also, a lot of people don't know that one of the original myths around vampires was that you could kill it by smashing a potato chip through its heart. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not vinegar usually because it stung a lot more. That's right. It's painful. You get that in a cut, on your, like a paper cut, or oh, it's no joke. Well, you can't keep vampires out with salt, right? You make a circle of it. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe salt circle, the, yeah. The chip, the chip represents the circle and the salt represents the salt. And that's how you keep out vampire. And that's why you <laughs> so don't true. see vampires around so often, because bluebird's the word. Um, <laughs> Sam, for the final fact of the first round. I want to talk about Vlad the Impaler, the man it's that... It's my porn name. It's, it's Tom's porn, porn name, first of all. And secondly, is the, um, the 
the name of who became Dracula. So Vlad the Impaler was Vlad the Third, and his dad was Vlad the Second, obviously. But um, the term Dracula means son of Dracul, which is quite good because there's a movie called Son of Dracula from 1943. So technically, that movie is Son of Son of Dracula, Dracula, <laughs> which is funny. So what I like about this fact is not that you went, but is that you went with the sort of genealogy of Vlad instead of the fact that he took his enemies and put them on stakes, still alive, <laughs> quivering. The Everyone... important thing is to get who's who's dad correct, not <laughs> the spike. When was his birthday? Kenny, <laughs> I'll tell you though, so it was 1431. People know that already, but no okay. one knows that he's the son of Son of Dracula. That's actually from the movie in 1943. I'm bringing new facts to the table. See, why would I teach you That's that, Penny, when you already know that? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to them to Sam's fact. This is not one of mine, but um, do you know the other person that was based on, that Dracula was inspired by, um, was mm -hmm. uh, Bram Stoker's boss. Oh, Henry Irving. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. like, this guy sucks. <laughs> I'm terrified <laughs> of this guy. <laughs> but I, I love him, but I'm terrified by him. And it's like a vampire thing. Confused homosexual feelings, ah! <laughs> oh. Again, for our next fact. To go back to what Sam was saying about um, Vlad Dracul, Vlad the Impaler, um, first of all, he used to sign his letters Dracula or Dragula, which is now a popular American reality TV format, which is kind of like a goth RuPaul's drag race. And the four characteristics that the drag queens need to embody on the show are drag, filth, horror, and glamour. That's um, amazing. But when Dragula was not going around dressing up fabulously and being amazing and wonderful, he was a member of the Order of the Dragon, which was dedicated to keep, keeping the Ottomans out of Wallachia, which is, I think, around modern-day Romania. And while he was fighting in 1462, fighting the Ottoman Sultan, um, Vlad left a town behind him, which was referred to the incoming Ottomans as a forest of the impaled. And I worked it out. It was between 1 and 1 1.5 kilometres wide, and between 2.7 and 3.5 kilometers long, there were about 20,000 people spitted that the army had to walk through as they followed Vlad and his forces. However, it was described as quite a sight for the Turks and the Sultan himself. The Sultan was seized with amazement and said that it was not possible to deprive of his country a man who had done such great deeds, who had such a diabolical understanding of how to govern his realm and its people. And he said that a man who had done such things was worth much. So... Mm. Vlad did terrible things mm. to try and keep the Ottomans out, and the Ottomans were like, fair play. So Ottomans are the, those things that you put, like, your um, your blankets and things inside, right, Jen? That's the, what he's like trying to yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, but they've got yeah. the stubby little legs, so they can go really, really fast when they get up to speed. They're a sight, <laughs> sight to be reckoned with. Imagine a whole <laughs> army of them. That would be incredible. <laughs> they've got so many blankets. Spikes. Their only natural enemy is woodworm which is hard to mobilize. <laughs> but I also do want to point out that the Romanian defense minister asserted, I, I believe sometime in the 1990s, it was recently, um, has asserted that Vlad Dracul would have been condemned for crimes against humanity had he been tried at Nuremberg. To point Big out, call. although the Sultan at the time was impressed, we should not be impressed. So, so Jen Specht, drag races and spit roasting. No, spitted people. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> over to you for your fact, please. Did you know that vampires and werewolves are the same thing? They were inspired by the same thing. Um, so the vampirism thing came from, yeah, people having iron deficiencies, basically, and people talking about people who needed more iron in their body, related to um, porphyria, like Jen was saying. Um, this is way back in the day in, like, ancient Greece. And so that's when they got this idea that werewolves were a thing. And so um, part of that condition actually means that you grow more hair. So that then became werewolves who would then try and eat people to try and get um, more blood to replace the iron that they were that they were losing. So the vampire thing started um, with sort of the way we know of them today came from that same condition, came from a book in 1819 called The Vampire, spelt with a Y, by a man called John Polidori, which was quite interesting because he wrote that book on a weekend away with Mary Shelley, Lord Byron, and Percy Shelley, who didn't do anything. But yeah. from that same weekend, Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. And Lord Byron probably wrote a poem or some shit. Lord, Lord Byron wrote the start of The Vampire. Amazing. I didn't even right know that. But this is still my fact. So mm -hmm. 
So, <laughs> so I claim that. Thank you, Tom. So my fact is that both vampires and werewolves came from the same thing, but then also both vampires and Frankenstein came from the same weekend. It was from a summer <laughs> in Italy that was apparently the coldest summer. Do you know there's a South Pacific link to that as well? A South Pacific the link? Reason it was the, yeah, the reason uh, it was the coldest yep. summer on record is because there was a massive, ex, a massive volcanic eruption in Tonga or Samoa, um, and it caused such a huge ash cloud in the atmosphere that all of Western Europe suffered droughts and crop failures for like two years because the atmosphere was so completely munted by all this ash there. That's and so they went for this weekend getaway in Italy to be like, oh, fun, Italy, summer weekend. And it was like cold and wet and it rained and it was dark at three o'clock in the afternoon and it just sounded miserable. So they stayed inside and wrote horror stories instead. That's so cool. So cool. Thanks, explosions. <laughs> Tom, over to you to close off the second round. Could you hit us with, our, with your fact, please? Uh, so vampire bats were named, have been named twice after different vampires. <clears throat> so vampire bats are named after vampires and not the other way around. Um, and vampire bats are a species of bat that goes up to basically any mammal and bird in the world and uh, kind of nicks them and then they don't actually suck blood. So that's the interesting thing. Vampire bats don't suck blood. They kind of or a hole and then lap the blood out um, as it comes out. But in order to keep the blood flowing, they have a, um, an anticoagulant in their saliva that stops the, uh, you know, stops it from clotting and allows about a tablespoon of blood to come out, which is actually not too bad. You can't like die from a single vampire bat. But that protein that prevents the coagulation, uh, they identified it, they figured out what it was, and they named it Draculin. Oh, so that's good. It's that's so really so good. Cool. It's like um, the 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 protein in fireflies that um that glows is called luciferin uh, um, yeah. which is not actually after lucifer but it's the same root well it would be it'd be the greek for light bringer yeah. i'm kind of sad now that vampire bats are named after vampires not the other way around because imagine if dracula was like <laughs> nyam, 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 nyam. <laughs> It'd be really just, adorable. It's just like, just a little bit. I'd rather Thank you. Goodbye. I want to lap your blood. Lip, lip, lip. <laughs> Miley Cyrus would have been well in. Sam, it's your turn to kick us off. Did you know that Bram Stoker's name is Abraham? That's what Bram is short for. I didn't know that. Great, great short. Makes sense. What up, what up Bram? <laughs> Bram. And I looked up a little bit more about Bram Stoker as well, because he, as well as writing Dracula, he also wrote uh, an amazing <laughs> book called, called Lair of the White Worm. And it was about this massive worm who loved kites and uh, mesmerism. But um, people said it was completely mad and it was considered super racist, super sexist. And people were, people were saying that they think he was in like the throes of syphilis when he came up with it because it is bonkers crazy time. Tom. Well, we all love our favorite puppet, Count the Count, uh, Count von Count of the Sesame Street fame. But what is his favorite number? 69. Uh, nice, but no thank you. Uh, his, actually, you're close. <laughs> His favorite number is 34,969. Um, Wait, 34,969? 969. 969. 969. Uh, and this Why? came from an interview. Uh, apparently it's a square root thing. So 100, uh, 3, 34,969 is a perfect square of 187. So 187 squared is 34,969. So... Well, 187, uh, apparently that is the total score you can get in a Scrabble set if you get all the tiles, uh, and no one really knows exactly what the hell's going on, but that's his favourite number. That's a great reason. I love that. I think it's the number of his victims. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Worse than Vlad, Vlad the Impaler, eh? Did you know that, that um, the count, it's, a, it's not only a pun because he loves counting, but that's based on an actual thing with vampires. Like, if you're getting attacked by a vampire, throw some rice down, and the vampire will have to count all the things. Um, and that's where they got the idea that the count loved counting. One, which oh, is oh. why for vampires going to a wedding sucks because everyone throws the <laughs> rice, and you're like, oh, for God's sakes, I'm, I, I'm the groom. <laughs> it's the one thing that's consistent um, across vampires from Europe, China, India, South America, and Sesame Street is the obsession <laughs> with counting. <laughs> So, Jim, 
I'm going to go back to Abraham Stoker himself um, <laughs> and the fact that the first production of Dracula, the stage play, A, precedes the novel, and B, was solely done for copyright reasons. So Stoker was the acting manager of the Lyceum in London. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, he was an assistant to the stage actor, Henry Irving, who was massively famous. And he wrote the first theatrical adaptation of his own novel, Dracula, before Dracula was published as a book. And he staged it at the Lyceum on the 18th of May, 1897, under the title Dracula or the Undead, which is a good title. And it was only performed once. So he just wanted to make sure that he would have the copyright to all of the theatrical productions of the novel Dracula. That's so funny when you now look and see there are 9,000 Dracula versions. <laughs> well, it's like, now in the common domain, but yeah, <coughs> in the public domain. Was it a sort of the producer's thing where he, he said, I'm going to make Dracula, <laughs> but I'm going to make sure that it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll only be on once. People will hate it. He had a reputation for being a bit of a, not quite a hack, but a relentless populist. So one of his really good friends, when he died, um, one of his really good friends said that apart from his biography of Irving, everything he did, he did for money. Like he wasn't a craftsman. He wasn't writing what he was really passionate about. He was just doing it for money, which you look at how much work he put into like the folklore research for Dracula and stuff. I don't buy it, but things like this, he was clever. Like he recognized the commercial realities of being an author and a playwright and, you know, the kind of like, monetary side of things and the business side of that and um, yeah I'm a, I'm a fan he did good maybe less so with the racism and the sexism and the crazy white worm but I'm an author yep. <laughs> <laughs> have you put on a theatrical production of snake brought cake in order to stake your no one claim take to that the idea no <laughs> oh. Tom leads us off again I'd like to tell you all about vampire pumpkins and watermelons <laughs> In this Sylvia a Thrush, legend. a watermelon drink you? <laughs> Not that far off. Um, so it's a folk legend, folk legend from the Balkans. Um, and it's the Romani people in that area um, who have the belief that um, if things are left outside on the night of the full moon, they'll become a vampire. And that basically applies to everything, including pumpkins and watermelons. Um, but apparently the pumpkins and watermelon vampires are not as concerning because they don't have teeth. So while they need to suck your blood, they have no means of doing so. <laughs> pumpkins and watermelons grow outside. So they do. Like, I don't know if it's a guarantee, but I think it's a risk. I think it's a bit of a risk if you, if, you, if that pumpkin and watermelon is left outside for too long. It <laughs> might become a vampire. Oh, I was just imagining like, like elderly Romany grandmothers going out and putting tiny tents over all the pumpkin patches and like, you're inside now, it's safe, bye. Second question, pumpkins came from South America, like not all that long ago. So, How do you reckon they got yeah, there, Kenny? Um, they flew over using their vampire <laughs> wings. I You've just... got to be suspicious of recent immigrants, is all, all we're saying. <laughs> Jen's an immigrant. That's why she's saying that. Yeah. And I'm not to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, if you leave something outside on the full moon and it becomes a vampire, and then you leave it outside on the full moon again, does it become a double vampire or does double it undo vampire. the vampire? Does the double vampire mean that it just eats itself? That's a can of vampire. Which is what cannabis would turn into if you leave your cannabis outside in the full moon. Yeah, That's perfect. You nailed it. So don't leave things outside, even things that need to be outside. Got it. <laughs> Oh. Jen, your turn for another fact. My fact is that Bram Stoker's heirs tried to burn Nosferatu, but he survived. His ears? His heirs. Oh, like heir to the oh. throne. Heir yeah. to the throne. Heir with a silent H. So, Nosferatu, the German vampire film starring Max Schreck as Count Orlok, fabulously parodied in the Carrie Always Helmed inter- uh, Shadow of the Vampire, um, was a 1930s German film that was definitely not Dracula, used basically the same story, changed some of the names and made it slightly different. Um, so it's Count Orlok instead of Count Dracula. And it's um, Hutter instead of Harker as the, the everyman who gets involved in the Count's evil shenanigans. Clever. Um, the company went bust immediately after producing the film so that they wouldn't <laughs> have to pay copyright infringement fees to Stoker's widow. Great. Um, and the heirs to Stoker's estate tried to, or got a court order to destroy all of the copies of Nosferatu because it was deemed to be a copyright infringement. But a few copies survived and it's been in circulation ever since. Wow. So you can try and burn Nosferatu, oh. but he is not. <laughs> He's a trickster. He's a trickster. Copyright. Yeah. So we're covering. <laughs> and I think about, 
And the thing about I'm reduce it down to copyright law. <laughs> I was just thinking that it, 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 Kenny, it, did you get Jen's podcast. boring thing about copyright law? Yeah, yeah. In, in a comedy podcast, we're covering um, genealogy and copyright law <laughs> and counting. So all the big yeah. topics. All the good so things. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Did you know you can visit Dracula's gravestone? What? Dracula's not a real person. How does that work? You can. So there's this place in Whitby that... Um, <laughs> Whitby. In Whitby. So... Um, I take it this is Whitby in England where Whitby the novel is set. In, that is right. That is right. Yeah. Not Whitby in New Zealand where... Not, not Whitby is, yeah. just across well, the harbour from me. <laughs> that's right. Nothing is set there. So um, so in this, in this story, Dracula's boat lands... In Whitby, and he goes climbs up some some church tower thing somewhere. There is a church in Whitby. People come to uh come used to come and visit this church all the time, being like, "Hey, can I go up the bloody tower and go see where old Dracula hung out?" And so the people there got so pissed off with this happening, so they made a fake tombstone and put it in their graveyard. And whenever people come along now, they're just like, "Just go check out the tombstone over there. It's a fake tombstone." <laughs> They've totally punked them. The nuns have punked all the Dracula fans in the Whitby. The nuns got us again. Oh. So I think we've got time for one more round, if everyone's reasonably concise. Yes. So 25 years before Dracula was published, there was what some people consider to be the opposite of Dracula, which was Sheridan Le Fanu's Carmilla. So this was um, a short story. Uh, deeply homosexual. It's a um, really fascinating lesbian um, kind of erotic fiction, but with a vampire setting where Dracula can turn into a dog, Carmilla can turn into a cat. But I did look back and try and find earlier English vampire stories. And the earliest one I could find, which is actually later than Tom's, um, I just really liked. It was back in 1845 and it was called Varney the Vampire, which just sounds like a, a comic strip about his misadventures. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite cute. Um, yep. But it was a serialized publication that ran for a couple of years from 1845 to 1847. And it was just basically him harassing this family, just being awful. But it's where the idea of two big incisors puncturing people's necks comes from. It's the first time that appears in literature. Sorry, dentist, canines, not incisors. Oh, sorry, canines. Oh, and also in Carmilla, oh. um, there was the, possibly the worst example of an um, alter ego. So it turns out that Carmilla the Vampire, spoilers for anyone who's still catching up on their early 1870s reading, um, <laughs> Carmilla the Vampire is actually the Countess Markilla, which is Carmilla, but with the first and third letters reversed. <laughs> Very clever. Kenny, can we have points off Jean for taking too long with her fast fact? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, right. And putting in a spoon in the top. Oh. Sam, over to you. There is a secret vampire in Peppa Pig. So secretly written into Peppa Pig, her teacher is Madame Gazelle. And there's secretly throughout the um, many, many episodes of it, you see that she never ages. And um, yeah, she's secretly a vampire. The hints are there. You can see it. It's very funny. Well done. Is anyone Pig. in Peppa Pig age? Everyone else. It's like Madame Gazelle taught all the kids' parents mm. and then all their parents oh, as well. Okay. And she always looks exactly the same. And she played in a rock band. She's the best <laughs> character, Madame Gazelle. Which sounds like Mademoiselle, and she's French as well, so it's very clever. Tom. Uh, arguably the most famous person to ever play Dracula, Bella Lugosi, who is one of the biggest stars of his era, uh, never wore fangs every anytime he played Dracula, but was bu buried with his cape. That's so, so badass. The most famous Dracula never had fangs. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he apparently was really annoyed about being typecast as Dracula, but was, you know, the greatest Dracula that ever lived. But he was still going to be buried in his cape because... That's how I became Bella Lugosi, the most amazing actor of my time. Um, point of order, um, Leslie Nelson. <laughs> Nelson was the best Dracula of all time. So future archaeologists will dig him up for some reason and go, this guy was really famous for, oh my God, he's actually got a cape and things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just take it to the heart just in case. <laughs> that would be a, like a, an interesting last wish as a person who's played like to be buried, like clutching a stake through your heart, like you you actually were <laughs> yeah. a vampire, and then you know. <laughs> that's great. I want to be buried with cinder blocks on top of my <laughs> coffin, so that people think I'm going to get out. <laughs> or just scratch marks on the top of the lid, yeah. so that people find it and feel really bad. Um, <laughs> I want one of oh, those no. head, head ringer coffin alert systems, but I want it set up with a concealed speaker, and then every time it's motion sensor, 
Every time someone goes past, they'll just hear this very faint, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> oh. That brings us to the end of the big fact hunt for this week. Um, bonus points all round, because we did not mention Twilight once. Yeah. And, uh, running through very quickly, my favorite facts, very ground. Um, so, uh, Porphyria and its possible origin of the vampire story. Um, Draculin and vampire bats being named after vampires and not the other way around. Um, vampires and counting, um, and how it's important to um, throw rice if you're ever struck by vampires. Um, Dracula's grave, which you can go visit in Whitby, um, which is a lovely seaside town. And um, uh, the secret vampire hidden in Pe Peppa Pig's novels, um, Adam Gazelle. So out of all those facts, I'm just having a quick look. Um, I think my favorite fact for this week is the Count's favorite number being um, 34969 and why vampires can get confused if you throw things at them. Um, <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, Sesame Street is good. Uh, I want to affect your hunt <laughs> and many other things. I want to affect your hunt. Charlie, I want to hunt your facts. Yeah. <laughs> affect sounds like suck and hunt sounds like blood. So, <laughs> what are you guys going to do? Uh, I this? regret making Tom the winner now. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Like, comment, subscribe. Give us your favorite non Twilight vampire facts below. Bonus points if they don't suck. And um, join us next week where Tom will be putting us to task on a topic of his choosing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.